Okay, it's our moment of truth. It's time to glue up the mirror box. So what I've done is I've kind of spread out everything I'm going to need. I like a big work area where I can uh, easily maneuver around whenever I'm clamping. I have a shop rag. I have some water to uh, dip the shop rag in to wipe off the excess glue whenever I'm clamping. I have my Tight Bond 3, which gives me a longer open time. I have a small glue brush that I'm going to use to spread the glue. And then I'm going to use at least eight clamps. And what I do is I take my clamps and I will spread them to the proper width or close to the proper width before I start gluing up. That way everything's ready to go. All I have to do is spread the glue and, oh yeah, have a little mallet. This is just a little one I made. Um, to tap everything in place because no matter how how perfect you think the fit's going to be, you're always going to need to uh, pop it a little bit with a mallet to get it nice and flush. So I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, we're all ready. I'm going to start gluing up. So first I'll take, I'll dip some glue on and I am going to spread. I've got my inside pieces facing up. So again, it's just gonna close like a book, and then I'll take the front piece and I'll put it on like this, tap everything together, and then clamp it all. So once I start spreading the glue, I'll kind of move quickly here. So I'm gonna spread the glue first on the back of the box joints as well. The quicker you can move, the better here. We do have a long open time with Type Bond 3, however, that doesn't mean it's an eternity. You still want to move pretty quick. What I like to do is hit the easy part of the finger joints. Now I'll do the side ones. Notice I am on my glue up table. If you're going to be doing this on a work surface that you're in love with or you like, you want to keep it nice looking, I certainly recommend laying down some newspaper or some wax paper or be ready to clean up your glue because I've got glue all over this. I call it my glue up table. So it's made to be abused here. Now the reason I choose box joints if anybody's still tuning in, is box joints give us a very, very large surface area to spread glue on. Now, a lot of people will say, aren't dovetail joints stronger? Well, that's true. They have a mechanical advantage, but what we're going to do is we're going to use these box joints. We're actually going to pin the box joints after we have glued everything up and clamped it together and the glue sets. We're going to pin those box joints, which is actually going to make them stronger than a dovetail joint would be, especially for the purpose that this box is going to serve and the types of uh, force that's exerted on it. The box joint is more than strong enough and much stronger than just a butt joint or a screw joint or a dado joint or a rabbited joint. I love the box joint. Plus, it gives it a nice little, uh, nice little look to it you know, on the outside, um, you know, the lighter you finish it, the more noticeable that box joint's going to be. So you can actually use that as part of the uh, overall pizzazz or decoration on the scope itself. Okay, so we've done that. Now I am going to, I'm just going to pick one of the sides to spread this glue to the inside. I'm not going to do it on the sides if I choose to do it on the back. Okay, so clean up this mess before I lay this down. Okay, I'm going to lay the back back down. I'm going to take each side. That side is in. All right. Okay. Do my top here. So this is the front. Okay, and again, 
I'm not going to do the inside joints of the sides, but since the front is gluing up there, I will do it on the front. Ryan, aren't you using too much glue? Yeah, probably. But I would rather use just a little bit too much than just a little bit not enough. This glue, once it's all glued together, is actually going to be stronger than the wood itself. Now you've probably heard that before, but the fact is it's true. Just to test, I've taken a, rock or a mirror box after it's been glued together, and I've thrown it down to break it to see what failed. And sure enough, it was not the glue joint, it was the wood. connected. Now, before I clamp, I'm going to take and wipe off these really bad dribbles in here. And of course, the outside is the most important part. Now, this isn't going to take care of all of the mess. Because once you start clamping, you put a lot more force, you're going to get quite a bit of squeeze out. If you glue it up correctly, you should get some squeeze out. Okay, I'm going to flip it upside down. This makes it easier to uh, measure to square after I start clamping. good about that. Now I'll take my small clamps first. I like to start at the back. Now I just put a little bit of pressure at first. I don't want to torque it down until I know I'm completely square. You can see a little squeeze out coming already. Now I'm going to go this way. Make sure you, you clamp just inside those finger joints. You don't want to be clamping on top of the finger joints because remember we left them a little bit proud, about an eighth of an inch or you can do a sixteenth or even a thirty-second of an inch if you're that comfortable. But uh, since they're proud, you're not going to get good clamping action. Okay, so I've got four down, four to go. Everything's still looking pretty good. as opposed to solid wood, what you're going to find occasionally is you're going to have a slightly warped piece. It could be a little bit cupped. We're not talking a lot. We're talking like a 32nd of an inch, but it'll be very noticeable when you start clamping up because you'll have, it'll be flush, flush on the bottom, flush on the top, and then the middle, there's going to be one or two that are just slightly not flush. They're not, they're not clamped all the way. You'll think, oh my gosh, I've got to really torque those down. Um, I find it a little bit easier is have a gentle pressure on all your clamps and then take a small mallet and tap it in the middle where 
you're saying it's not joined properly. So, okay, now I'm going to go back, slightly tighten my clamps. Don't over tighten. That's a, with plywood, that's kind of a common mistake. Now, what's going to happen? This is half inch plywood. It's a 16 inch mirror box, so it's about 20 inches by 20 inches. What's going to happen is if you put too much pressure and you're clamping, you're going to bend this wood very, very badly. It's pretty easy to see whenever you take a, uh, take like a speed square or a uh, little tri square, and once you measure for square, you're going to see, oh my gosh, that thing is bent. You don't want to do that. You don't need that much force. You want to make sure that all your joints are nice and flush, everything's touching. You've got good pressure, but I mean, there's no reason to just sit there and torque it and torque it down. Um, because again, it's a box joint, so there's a mechanical, um, there's a mechanical advantage to just a plain butt joint or a dado joint. And I can see right here, I've got a little bit of daylight. So I need to tap it that way. And if tapping it that way doesn't work, what I would need to do is loosen these that are going this way, front to back, and then I need to tighten these a little bit. But I'm thinking just tapping it will probably get it. There we go, now it's coming. I'm actually gonna loosen that a little. I'm going to do one more clamp. So I've got eight on here. I'm going to grab a ninth, put a little more pressure down at the bottom, the bottom front here. Now I'm going to take my rag, clean up as much of that excess glue as I can. You don't have to get it all because you're going to sand it down, but I'll tell you what, any any seconds I can save in sanding, I will do. Just wait. Once we get to the finishing aspect, you'll see why. We're back and forth from the finishing room to out here time and time again. Now, the new question is, how long do I let it Sit. How long do I let it stay in the clamps? Well, if you just read the tight bond literature, it'll say 45 minutes to an hour, I believe. That is not what I do. When I'm clamping a job like this, I am going to leave it clamped for, oh gosh, anywhere from 6 to 24 hours. And also, I want to be really, really cognizant of the temperature because we don't want it too cold. This glue is not going to set properly if it's much under 50 degrees. So it's getting kind of cold as it is right now. It is January. I haven't turned the heat in the shop on yet because I am a cheapskate. But uh, I am probably going to, after we do this video, I'm going to take this into the finishing room and let it sleep inside all night um, because I'd rather the glue set properly and I don't have to worry that one day my customer is going to be using the scope and their mirror box comes undone. So this is about it. This is a glue up operation. That's how we did it. I'm going to take and make sure I'm square. I feel pretty good that my, my joints were right. I'm square there. Okay, so I am square. That's it. We could do one of two things from here. We could do the top of the mirror box, cut these, uh, cut our finger joints nice and proud, 
get those flush cut, and then do the top of the mirror box, or we could skip past that if we had plenty of daylight left and we would go start making the rocker box right now. Since I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits for the day, I'm going to take this inside, and tomorrow we'll go ahead and do the top of this. We'll flush cut the uh, finger joints, and we'll go ahead and start the rocker box. Getting really close now.